people ask, where do you get your ideas? Well, right here. All of this is my Martian landscape. Somewhere in this room is an African veldt. Just beyond, perhaps, is a small Illinois town where I grew up. And I'm surrounded on every side by my magician's toy shop. I'll never starve here. I just look around, find what I need, and begin. I'm Ray Bradbury, and this is... Well then, right now, what shall it be? Out of all this, what do I choose to make a story? I never know where the next one will take me. And the trip? Exactly one half exhilaration, exactly one half terror. Express heading north from Venice to Paris to Calais. Is it all my years as a trained nurse that causes me to wonder at this most strange, most peculiar thing? This strange, most peculiar and yet most familiar thing is a terribly old, terribly sick man I describe as the ghastly passenger. He's a traveler obviously dying of some dread disease. and started to fly. <laughs> I don't believe it. <laughs> Neither do I. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a better one. <laughs> don't start. <laughs> oh, dear. I believe. The old man, right? The man just now in the dining car. The same. I'm a nurse. Thank God, please. Right, just a minute.
Listen very carefully, yes? I know who you are and what you are sick from. You suffer from a disease of people. Hmm. People on this train are your affliction. They are killing you. <laughs> From another country, yes. The nights are long, and when the wind blows, people listen. But now, things have changed. People do not listen anymore. How, how, do, you, how do you know this? I'm a special nurse with a special memory. when I was six. So? Met? In Ireland. At my uncle's house. Far out. In the country rains and mists. And where fogs walked on the roofs. And the wind wanted the horse. Late, one night, a shadow walked in my room. The shadow sat on my bed. It was so cold. He made me cold. And the shadow that sat on my bed and whispered to me, was much like you. Yeah. And who? And what am I? Eh? You're not sick. You're not dying. You already a ghost. You then. May I? The last right? Yes. Oh, um, I had my last right years ago. It's not necessary. Thank you. You must let me help you. How can you help me? You are going to Calais and on to Dover, no? And then to a castle north of England where I can safely hide forever. Oh, that's almost impossible. No, no. no I didn't mean... Listen, uh, impossible without me. Me? Ah, I will go with you to make sure you're safely across the channel. But why? You do not know me. I saw you in the rains when, as a girl, I searched the moors for the Baskerville hunt. 
You see, I do know you. You are not English. Where are you from? Um, my mother was French, and my father English. And I believe. You, now, who exactly are you? Oh, I've lived near Vienna for 200 years. I've hid from atheists and non-believers in libraries, in dust-filled stacks, where I made breakfasts of spirit myths and uh, graveyard tales. I have survived phantom horses, baying hounds, dreadful cats, crumbs shaken from tomb lids. But one by one, all around me, my friends of the unseen world vanished. My phantom compatriots were thrown out of great homes and dark castles when they were rented out, rented out for bed and breakfast tourists whose only belief was a drunken tongue on a full belly. So, with the, um, with the population and the unbelievers doubling by the day, all of my spectral friends fled north. I, I am the last. <laughs> and your name? A thousand fogs visited my family vault. A thousand rains have washed my tombstone. My names have been erased by time and the weather. The name has vanished. <laughs> the flowers and the dust. Why... Why are you helping me? I'm something of a ghost myself. Oh, Lord, what a challenge. I will run with you to face people, help you through the Paris crowds, the stations, to the sea, to England. It will indeed be a Luck. <laughs> Luck. <laughs> oh. Now rest. Sleep. You must be strong when we arrive in Paris. Paris? Yeah. I do fear that. Paris. Paris, the crowds, their disbelief will destroy me, you know. Oh, come on, we have time. I know a nice place to hide you. Lachaise Cemetery. All the famous people are here. Oh, much thanks, kind lady. So quiet here, so serene. Eh? Michel Verbeer. Oh, an atheist. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, Jean Michel Hawkins. Friend of Jean Bossard, an existentialist. Oh, well. Yeah. <laughs> ah, but this one, ah, uh, this. A writer of mysteries, we love nights and fogs. Ah. Uh, 
Chopin. It's these people that make me afraid. I'll never reach over, you know. You will. And here are my weapons against them. Oh, Edgar Allan Poe. <laughs> the Hound of the Baskervilles. Oh. Ah, Hamlet. Alas, poor Yorick. I knew him, Horatio, a fellow of infinite jest, of most excellent fancy. He has borne me on his back a thousand times. Here hung those lips that I have kissed, I know not how oft. <laughs> <laughs> There's no place to hide on board. There is. Trust me. Come. Sorry. Oh, Would you yes. like that? Oh, yes. You do believe in ghosts. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Please. For the children. Tell you a terrible, a frightful, a rain-filled, fog-bound, thunder and lightning story about a real ghost. The last ghost. This is my story. Now, children. Go! 
Come on, children, time to go. Kind lady, for a moment, just for a moment, I thought I would not have a chance to thank you for your dear attentions. Or to say farewell. No need for thanks, and not farewell. Shh. I'm going with you. I have nowhere else to go now. Thank you. 